And we're back. It's week three, the fifth online session for English for Public Administration 1, EPA 1. I wanted to show you a little bit about life as it is. <clears throat> when we're on campus, it's not strange for students to pop into my office, my messy, messy office. Well, for the moment, I wanted to show you part of my study space now. I'm going to start by showing you my collection of ties. Uh, can we get around there? Believe it or not, there are actually 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 20. There are 40, 40, 4, 0, 40 ties there. Pretty amazing. Now I'll go back to where I want to be. And I'm going to close that tie door. Put this away. And boom. And there's lots of other things you could see if you were in my house. But we're going to leave that for another day. If you're wondering why I do things like this, it's because when we're in the real classroom, I do kind of the same thing. Part of the objective in my class is to help you improve your general English skills, if you remember our lecture from last week. So I often start our class the first five or seven minutes just talking about whatever is in my head when I walk in the classroom door. Usually it's completely unplanned. Sometimes in the hours or days before a class, I think of something I want to talk about. And that might be something like MT, right, membership training, or something that's going on around campus or around in society. But other days, I really have no idea how I'm going to start the class. So it's a kind of a living English, an unscripted, unplanned, almost genuine native speaker kind of talk. Usually, I'll speak a little bit slower part of the time, and I'll repeat things or toss in a Korean word here or there to help you. But the beginning of class, that first five or seven minutes of ear opening, is not something for a test. It's not uh, any information that I will require from you in the future, unless maybe I write it on the chalkboard and then say it again in later in that class or in a future class. But otherwise, that first start of class is just English in your ears. Just like the uh, everyday listening to English 15 minutes is just English in your ears. So we're only at about four minutes, but we're going to go ahead and move forward with today's planned lesson. Okay? So. This is our fifth meeting. We have some objectives. We're going to review our last class. Actually, that should be classes, right? Two classes, let's fix it. Classes, because we had both the recorded class, the third meeting, and we had our live Zoom chat. And I want to remind you about the stuff on the CTL, especially the assignments. Now, that's not really a learning objective, is it? It's more of a teaching objective, what I'm supposed to do. And then the third one is to remind you about our Zoom discussions, and we'll get into that. And finally, uh, we're going to be working through the book. 
we're going to work forward in the book. We're going to skip a little here and there uh, because there are certain parts that are better in our live Zoom class. And there are certain parts that can be done just as well in recording. And for those who joined our Zoom class last time, we did have a vote. I asked you. I tried to practice democracy. And you can see my shirt's really wrinkled. It bothers me here. But it's just the way it is when I'm sitting down. And it's a new shirt I bought in U.S. last time. Uh, last visit to U.S. was... Uh, goodness, when did I go to U.S.? Um, January? Yeah, before the virus. And uh, in the class, I practiced democracy. I asked people, do you want two Zoom meetings or do you want only one? And people voted for one. So we'll talk about things from the Zoom lesson. And as I said, working through the book. So let's move ahead to our review of last class. First of all, you should be starting with your listening logs. I gave you a template in our last recorded class and said you can do something like this. It's not rocket science. It's not perfect. Let's flip through that real quick. It was like this. Right? Date time, program, tell me something about what you heard. Not too much uh, pop music, not too much of a study recording, 15 minutes every day, six days a week is a good idea, five days a week, and you might lose some points at the end of the semester. There can be days when it's not convenient, when something's happening and you have uh, to travel to somebody's, your family member's home or something like that. Uh, so it's much better to do every day as early as possible so you don't have problems in the future, okay? Oh, back down. So listening logs. Second, Zoom. I gave you some information about how to prepare. A number of people had problems now there were three parts to problems. Part one was my problem. Uh, in one of my class meetings, the URL wasn't working right and I had to change it. That made problems. The second problem was that many people had not, had not, did not install the app in advance, didn't practice with it at all, and so couldn't get in, couldn't even install the app. The third problem was once inside, if you got inside, wait, problem three was that the server had some hiccups. Uh, suddenly, around the world, Zoom is hugely popular. Uh, their use, the demand, has more than tripled in two weeks. And while they expected they would be ready in case there were things, they always talked about double capacity, capacity or ability two times what they had expected in the past. Well, there were times when they were much more than that. Uh, especially I heard Australia had huge problems. Zoom has servers all around the world, not just in US, not just in Hong Kong or wherever. They had servers all around the world. But they got smashed. They were overpowered with too much demand. So uh, that was a server problem. That was the third type of problem. The other issue that came up not of those three was we suggested that you use a computer, a proper computer, not a phone or a tablet. Because the Functions are different. The menus are different. The things you can and cannot do are different. So we really, 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 really recommend that you use a desktop or notebook or netbook computer. If you're using a notebook or netbook, probably you have a webcam. 
if you're using a desktop. Maybe you don't. But we would really, really, really like to see your face. It makes life better for everyone. So, I know money is money, but if you can, go out and spend imanan or imanuchanan or something and buy yourself a cheap, um, a cheap webcam. Another possibility, some people have told me that in their classes, students log in two times. One with their smartphone and they use that for their webcam and voice and once with their computer so they can type. Now that's probably going to make me crazy. I see another typo here. But Well, better for me to be crazy than for us to not see your face. Finally, you choose. We'd like to see your face, especially when we break the class into small sections, which we will do this week. We're going into discussion rooms. Rooms, I think of it as discussion groups, but the software says discussion rooms, where people can chat in smaller groups of two or three or four. Uh, we need to figure that out. So that you can actually do things like dialogues, working with just a couple other students instead of so many people in one room. Okay, so uh, that's kind of Zoom. Please do log in. Get into the room five minutes early before class. Now, there are some students who have another class that goes all the way up into ours. The timetables aren't perfect. Do the best you can. I expect to see you in the class on time. Next, uh, last class, we talked about blending English and PA, blending English and public administration. And I had the two circles that merge into one. And I talked about the, the, the angle chart. You know, there's a, a language skill and there is the uh, content, how difficult it is, and then we balance. Okay, that kind of stuff is on your midterm. You need to know it. It's in the Haksapjario. You should print it out so you can study it easily. My midterm test is open book and open notes. If you print out stuff that's on the e-board, you can look at it. If you don't print it out, it's going to be very difficult during the test to find things. I suggest you print it out. If you want to keep your notebook electronically, you can do that. You can keep it on your phone or whatever. And when you come in for your test, you can use your phone or your computer. You cannot communicate with other people. That's not allowed. Okay? But you can use your electronic files on my test. That's fine. That's real life. Business people pick up their smartphone or their, their uh, uh, tablet or their uh, netbook computer and they do work even in meetings, so I don't mind if you use technology to keep your records. Personally, I'm old. I think it's easier to flip through pages in a notebook to find something than it is to try to find a file on my computer. But it's your choice. You're not so old as me. The next thing we did is we talked about what do you do? Well. What do you do? You could answer by talking about your career. I'm an engineer. What do you do? Uh, I work with Samsung Electronics. What do you do? I'm a professor of public administration. So your career means like your job type or your company or your job title. It's better to say I work with than I work at or I am with. I'm with Game Young University or I work with Game Young University. Sounds more professional. And be ready to talk about your professional day. I'm an office worker. Yeah, what do you do? Uh, I work in an office. No. What do you do? It's 9.15 a.m. What are you doing? It's 10.45 a.m. What are you doing? It's 3.30 p.m. What are you doing? You don't need to make a timetable. But be able to talk about the kinds of things you do. If you work at uh, LG Telecom, what do you do? I sell phones, 
and I assist people to reorganize their data from their old phone to their new phone. I sign people up for the LG U Plus phone service. That's what you do. I use LG U Plus because I'm cheap. And LG U Plus is usually a little bit cheaper. All right, so what do you do your usual day? Then we talked about the idea of gongmuan, because people often want to be a gongmuan. And how do we say that in English? And I mentioned there's four ways. Public servant, public official, public officer, public servant. You should know that. It's a common question on my test. And guess what? We have just reviewed our previous class, and wow, already almost 16 minutes gone in this class. Just reviewing. Now, I want to warn you that reviewing previous classes is not my customary style. I'm doing it this semester so far because we're doing things online and everything's new and everything's different. And just like that idea of blending English and PA, we're now blending technology and English and PA. So as I mentioned in the Zoom class, everything's harder. If we did this in Cacao Talk, maybe you're expert in Cacao Talk. Probably you're more expert than me in Cacao. Okay? But we're not using Cacao, so there's more things added for you. It's a little bit more difficult. And that adds to the complexity. It adds to your cognitive load. Remember that word? So, we can talk about blending English and PA and technology, or blending English and PA and IT, information technology. Okay? So, that's pretty much all that we need for, whoops, we're here, for talking about previous classes. So now let's take a look at the CTL. Mm, I do have it open, don't I? Don't I? Don't I? Oh, I don't have it open right now. Darn, 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 darn. All right. I'm, um, I don't need to point through it. There's actually only one new post or entry, log entry, in the eboard. And it basically reminds you that uh, we're doing stuff online. It gives you the URL for your class meeting. Every week, our second class meeting will have the same URL. Okay? So uh, you should be able to just go back up to the notices section and click on that URL every week. But I did put the, the URL in the eboard as the first post for this week. So underneath that top thing that talks about the book, the next thing will have uh, information about this URL for Zoom. Also in that post was mention of the fact that school is definitely going four weeks online through April, what day is it? April 5th, which you can't see on my calendar, my calendar's too low, but, um, so technically, officially, at the moment, you know, we're talking about what's going to happen, well, uh, March 16th is the first week, March 23 is the second week, March 30th through April 5th is the third week, we have announced that we will be online doing remote classes like this, the recorded class, and Zoom or discussion classes through April 13. Now I'm recording this on Sunday. Right now it's Sunday here. And supposedly the government will announce on Monday or Tuesday if they're going to extend the no class period longer for elementary school and middle schools 
when they will start in elementary school, middle school, high school, when they will start, if they will start. And also, this may impact universities. Our own gaming university has said so far, yes, yes, we plan to start classes on April 13th, Monday, April 13th. That's the plan. We shall see. Um, nobody knows what the government's going to say, or at least they're not announcing it officially yet. And nobody knows, or at least nobody's announcing yet, what our gaming university is going to do. So we shall do the best we can as long as we can. All right. Um, I want to also remind you that on the CTL there are assignments. They have deadlines. If you miss the deadline, you're done. I'm not planning to change those deadlines. Don't just look at the timetable when you first peek at the CTL. Open up the assignment and take a look. With quizzes and tests, there was a problem because I had not used those before and I had set them. Okay, we're using PP now and PPP. Um, I had set them for only one test chance. But I have changed that for now, for these little quizzes and polls and things, that you can go back and do it again and do it again, a uh, total three times. So if you go in and look at it and go, oh, I don't know that yet, and close it and go study, yes, you can go back and open it up again. Midterm test won't be that way. If we have to do midterm online, it will be one shot, baby, one shot. Alright, um, there, there are assignments, kind of like homework, quadre. There are uh, tests, or qui I think of them as quizzes and polls. That's under the Sheehan section. There is the, uh, the e-board, as I call it. And then there is also the discussion board, Jayu Geshepan, which I'm not going to look at, uh, or maybe rarely take a look at it. There is the Q&A section. You can ask me a question, or you can send me a cacao, or you can send me an email, or you can send me a text message. Please, not after 10 o'clock. And there is the notices section at the top. I think I've covered all of the board, but it's your job to keep up. It's not my job to keep up. I'm not your babysitter. This is not middle school. The teacher has to remind you of your assignments. Okay, you're adults. You can drink, you can be responsible for your homework, your assignments. Okay, with the Zoom discussions, first, you need to be there. If you're not there, you're absent. Second, you should be ready to talk. Okay, the aim in the Zoom section is student talking time. We didn't do it the first time, we're just, last time we're just kind of getting an idea how things work. But the aim of the discussions is students talking. And we'll go there step by step. So you need to make sure that your earphones work. You need to make sure that your microphone works. Test it. I personally use Skype for my system testing. Um, it's easy for me. If you have something like Steam on your computer, Steam has a different audio system and what works on Steam maybe doesn't work on Zoom. So be sure you test. In Zoom there is a audio system test and a mic system test. Figure it out. Okay, It's the 21st century. All of our students have to be slightly proficient. They have some idea what's going on with technology. When you go to your company, they don't want to spend all day teaching you how to do things. Okay, That's your job. That's not what university is for, to teach you basic technology. You figure it out. Find somebody to help you. Go to a hagwon. Study a YouTube. That's what I do. I had a problem this morning with something else on my computer, and I went to YouTube and found out how to do it. 
Um, yeah, a lot of YouTube's in English, but it's there. You can do it. Okay. In the Zoom discussions, you will need your book. If you haven't yet bought your book, buy it online. Delivery is available. Um, coming on campus is somewhat difficult. I do not know if the campus bookstore is open. You can pick up the phone, right? You can check the university website for the phone number, call them, ask them if they're open. Ask them if they'll ship it. Maybe they will. I don't know that. Uh, your Korean is much better than mine, okay? Keep that in mind. Your Korean is much better than mine. Finally, in terms of Zoom, um, if you don't have the book yet, and like today, if you don't have the book yet, well, I have put the first two chapters in the CTL. Download it! Have it available. Now, again, I'm older. It's easier for me to print things out. Other people might choose to put it on the computer screen the same time they're doing Zoom, but then you have some space problems and it gets weird. Uh, if you don't have a double screen system, it gets really weird. Alternatively, well, you don't, for example, I have this huge old big old tablet. Right? This is an eight inch tablet. They measure this way, eight inch. Um, I can read book pages in my phone. In my tablet in a smaller phone it might be hard the other thing is with zoom you should have paper and pencil or open the notepad memo pad you should have the notepad open on your computer because there are listening assignments there are listening assignments today and so you want to be able to make notes all right and so, let's start working through the book. I'm going to close this and move this a little bit and move this down a little bit and you may remember that we started on page one and I wanted to point out that the name Park is not only a Korean name. This woman might be Korean, but Park is also a perfectly good English name. I mean, in England, you'll find people named Bill Park, who's white like me. Right? Uh, Lee, L-E-E, -E, Bill Lee, could also be white like me. <coughs> These are not strictly only Korean names. We use them in English also. <coughs> and as I mentioned in the last recording, uh, we will hear <coughs> different voices. Uh, Japanese accents, Spanish accents. Part two, I hope you'll look at it before our, our uh, chat our uh, Zoom class, but we will do that in the Zoom class, second meeting. So today, we're going to start on the book's number, page four. It's a listening exercise. And what we're going to do is ask you to check the lines, fill in the blanks, all the kinds of things that uh, the book would have you do in class. Now again, if you don't have uh, a hard copy of the book, get a piece of paper and scribble on it. That's the easiest. Or open up your memo pad <clears throat> or whatever it is you want to do. Please don't plan to just scribble on the screen because we will scroll up and down the screen and your, your scribbledy notes will get messed up. All right, so take a moment, go grab a piece of paper and a pen or pencil, or you can write in blood, I don't care, and get ready to write or check things, or 
you can open up your memo pad. All right, so we're going to start on page four with exercise number one. And I'm going to play the audio. Page four, business Okay, quick stop. I'm going to play those two again. Your job is to is to identify which name you hear and you can either write it down, make a note how it's different, write you know, T for top and B for bottom. I don't really care how you do it, but we're just paying attention. We're just warming up our ears, listening for differences. Okay, let's work on this a little bit now. Well, I guess that's all we get. <sighs> I'm going to pull out my book because I've got my scribbledy notes in my book. Here we go. A. John Wolf. W O L. F of E. Final letter, E. So I should point out here that in these various name spellings that we hear, they're possible. For example, the name Lee could be L-E-E, -E, or if it's somebody from Vietnam, they spell their name L-E very often, and if they're from other parts of the world example one spelling in England is L E I G H and some Chinese spell the name Li L I one of the uh, famous movie Kung Fu fighters is Bruce Lee with an L I of course the Bruce Lee L E E from the 1960s and 1970s is probably more famous so, Wolf, W-O-L-F-E, B, Jessica Stewart, spelling it the Scotland way, S-T-U-A-R-T, S-T-E-W-A-R-T -E is more of an English spelling. And by the way, the name Stewart, both spellings can be a given name. One of my friends, a teacher in Korea, his name is uh, Stuart Jones. What's it? Stuart, Stuart, what's his last name? I think it's Stuart Jones. But anyway, his given name, the name his mother gave to him, was Stuart. C, 416 Harlem Avenue. Now, these are challenging. Not only Koreans, but all around the world. People have a hard time with the teens and the tees. So the way to remember it is by accent or stress. For example, the, the, 
the the six teen. So we would go six very soft. Teen. Six teen. Six teen. Seven teen. Eight teen. But conversely, when we're talking about the T's, then we put stress on the first syllable. Thirty. No hard stress second syllable. It's the first syllable. Fur. D. Four. D. And we can say T or we can say D. This is normal in English that we often use unstressed syllables with a T to sound like a D. So, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 16, 17. All right? So, letter C is for 16, teen, for six, oh, whoops, for 16 Harlem Avenue. Letter D. Now we we heard three one two five 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 zero seven eight two. The first one three one two, not three two zero. And we're going to talk about this separately. But sometimes people will use those three digit sections with two digit combinations. Three digit section. Three, one, two is three digits. And they'll make two digit sections. They'll say three, twelve. The second section is a two digit. One, two, twelve. But in this reading, we heard three, one, two, five, 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 zero, seven, eight, two. Zero, seven, eight, two. Or maybe she said, I don't remember now, oh, seven. In English, sometimes we make a zero sound just O because we're lazy. Zero, mm, just O. So, and letter E, 1314. 1314. 1314. 1314. Not 1340. 1340. 1314. Excuse me. 1314. 1314. Bell Avenue. Suite 50. 50. Not 15. 50. Not 15. Alright. So, A top, D bottom. C top, D top, E bottom. Continuing there, I want to give you a little example. Let's see if I can pop this up. I'm going to tell you my mom's real telephone number. So please do not call my mom because the time zone is so different. If you call her, you might be calling her at 6 a.m. My mom's phone number is 619-423-5138. But I say 619-423-423. 5138. Let's see, need more space in here because they're different. Right? That's how I say it. That, 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 that. But my high school friend says 619 as 619. Then he says 423. Then he says, 51.38. So I visit him last uh, year, and I said, hey, I'm in town. Give me a call. I'm at my mom's house. And he'll say, oh, yeah, uh, uh, her number is 619-423-5138. I go, yeah, that's right. But that's not how I say it. So when we're telling phone numbers, we can use all ones, which I call onesies, 
O-N-E-S-I-E. -E. That's kind of a child talk. Or we can do two Z's. One Z's and two Z's. But it's important to know that when we do two Z's, in standard American, and in many other countries, if there are three numbers, the first number is a one Z. And the second and third number becomes a two Z. So 619, not 619. Okay? 619. Not 423, but 423. 5138. Onesies and twosies. However, if you go to a place like uh, Singapore, you might hear a number like and they might say that. 832-334-4777. That's how I would say it. They might say 832-33-44-777. Or they might call it Double three, double four, triple seven. Now, Americans would never say triple seven, and really, we never say double three or double four. That's not American style. It's really something more like a British style or a Singaporean style. So when I visit Singapore, I'm always a little confused in the beginning. Get off the airplane, get in a taxi, and the radio is on, and there's radio announcements. They call it, ring us on. They don't say telephone. They say ring us. Ring us on. 832-33-44-777, right? 833-33-44-777. Mm -hmm. ah! Takes me a while for my brain to get used to this style. Why do they do that? Well, who's the most famous double in the world? Dum da dum 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 da da dum dum. Double O Seven James Bond, right? James Bond is not American. James Bond is English, and in England they do doubles. In the U.S. we don't. U.S., if that was our secret agent, we'd probably call him 007. Uh-oh, mistake. A little strange, right? But, so double O comes from England. In U.S., we do use the word double O for two reasons. One is because James Bond, and the other is because a shotgun. Uh, we use the old, old English word, uh, American too, from 100 years ago, ought. So, O-U-G-H-T equals not, which if you studied British you might know not, as in knots and crosses, equals zero or without, which is the same as, see if I can spell today, yong, oh, be it, shit, da. Ought, not, zero, without, or da. So, Americans might say double O. Uh, if we're talking about a shotgun, we might call it a, a double ought kind of size. Anyway, so double O, triple sevens. There's your British talk for today. Now, I'm not putting this particular piece of information, the onesies, the twosies, the doubles and triples. This is not going on the e-board. It can be on your test. So if you're not taking notes, you lose. Okay? Part of my teaching mission is to help you improve your academic skills. Improve your note-taking skills. When you go to your company in the future, when you get your job in the future, your boss should not be complaining that 
my new employee don't know how to take notes. Okay, we got that. That's done. Now, we're going to listen to the next part. Part two, fill in the forms. You're going to write down the information as it appears in the forms. And I need to make myself smaller so that you can read everything. And we're going to scroll up. Okay, part two, listen, fill in the forms. to open up oopsies there we go page four exercise two listen fill in the form item a Now, notice that in this particular section, they wrote last name and first name. Again, that is very normal. That is the standard in most countries where last name equals family name and first name equals given name. But because Koreans do it different, as do, if I remember, Hungarians, and many, not all Chinese, and most, but not all Japanese, when they're doing English, they do their name opposite, family name first, and given name last. I always suggest that you use, my family name is Park, my given name is Minji. Okay? So that's my suggestion. Uh, once again, guest name Emerson that's her last name and her first name well we're gonna listen again back up a little bit and play it again may I help you? hello I'd like to make a reservation may I have your name? yes it's Emerson Brooke Emerson So let's back up just a second and listen to that name again. Oh, 
Okay, how hard was that for you? It might have been challenging, and that's okay. We're early in the semester. Uh, I don't have any ability rules or standards. I'm not testing you on your English skill. This is just our working together time. I'm going to go through the answers really quickly, and I hope you did well. But if you didn't, that's okay. And I think that exercise one with the names is on your student recording. And let's see, unit one. Uh, hmm, it doesn't look like you have it. That's too bad. Sorry about that. You don't have these. Um, so you can't really practice by yourself. But let's go through it. So, uh, A, Clarion Hotel. The guest name is Brooke Emerson. Brooke, B-R-O-O-K-E. Uh, and if you're old or you like old movies, you might know that Brooke Shields was a very famous actress in the late 1990s. Well, actually, through the 1990s. And so when they made this book, that was a very popular name. The address is 1342, 1342, 1342 Sutter Street or Sutter Street. That's a famous street in San Francisco. S U T T E R S S S, -S, -S, -S Sam U T T E R Sutter Street, San Francisco, California 94123. The phone number is Oh goodness, I didn't write it down the area code. 555-7193. By the way, if anybody tells you their phone number is 555, it's a lie. Because 555 is not a real telephone number in U.S. We use 555 when we want information. Now, 411, in Korean, il il sa, right? 411 is in your area, for example, in Daegu, you can dial 411 and get information like what's the phone number for blah blah blah. Right? In US, 411 is useful in your area, but not nationwide. In Korea, sa il il is, or il il sa, excuse me, is all over the country. But in US, 411 is only in your phone district. So if you want to get a phone number from somewhere else, you have to dial that area code and then dial 5551212. So my mom's uh, area code is 619, I, I showed you earlier, right? That's for San Diego. And if you like wrestling, if you watched WWE a few years ago, you know that one of the wrestlers, his famous move was the 619. Well, that's because he's from San Diego. Anyway, um, so if I'm in San Diego in area code 619 and I want to know a telephone number in LA, which is often 213, then I would dial 213 So 555 is a false number. It's only used for information requests, 555 and a few other telephone company technology type numbers. All right, so Brooke Emerson, 555 and I think her area code might have been 415, but I didn't write it down. B, Phoenix Travel. His name is Jordan Sims, S-I-M-M-S. -M -M 
and his street address is 317 317 teen 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 317 rose like the flower r-o-s-e street seattle washington phone number hmm looks like i didn't write it down bad teacher c department of immigration arrival card the name is wang mei lan so family name wang w-a-n-g first name middle name whatever mei lan m-e-i-l-a-n nationality china passport number was a three seven four was this one zero nine eight two and a signature so we are at 56 minutes i was kind of hoping that we would get to the page six today but we're not gonna and i always tell people let me let me move my photo back to the front so you can see what i'm talking about now my messy room messy bookcase if you look on my page six on my page six uh, i have a star up here and this star says, this is important, this is testable. Testable. It is possible to put on the test. What do I mean by that? I mean that I don't want you to memorize all the facts on the test. That's not interesting to me. But I do want you to be aware of the ideas, the general information behind the readings in each chapter. And I mentioned this when we first went through the book. The last reading section in each chapter is very much possible to put on the test. So it's a good idea. It will be easier for you when we do this in class if you read it before class. You should always look ahead in the book. So when we go online into Zoom, we are going to work on page 5 and page 6. And possibly a little bit on page 7 that you can't see. It's the numbers part at the bottom of page 7. And if we're really, really lucky, we might even start moving into page 8. But I don't know that we'll have that much time. Uh, let's just go back and find out the information that I'm missing. Okay, we got Brooke. I'm going to pull out a pen so I can fill in the part of my book that's missing. Sutter. I was right. Okay. Area code 415. That's the real area code for San Francisco. Just like Daegu's area code is 
Okay, in the same way. I think we're done. Have a great week, and I'll see you online in our Zoom class.